Hi Floss Tube. I'm Misty Purcell. Welcome to my channel. I'm the designer and fabric dyer at Luminous Fiber Arts and welcome. If this is your first time, thanks for visiting me and if you've been here before, thanks so much for coming back. Happy Easter to you if you celebrate Easter. Today is the 12th of April and I'm back again uh, already. I would normally just do weekly videos during Mania, but because of things being what they are, I wanted to come back a little bit more often just to say hello, and I know I'm really appreciating all the videos and comments and all the people who are keeping me company, and so I want to do the same for you and keep you company if you feel like joining me today. So, um, let's just get right into it. Uh... Giveaway winners from last last video were Laura D and Ruth Trumbull. I contacted them and they've already gotten back to me. So their things will be going into the mail tomorrow. Congratulations, ladies. I hope you enjoy the charts. Um, shout outs. I have one shout out. I watch Shelly. She's Diary of a Stitcher and I follow her on Instagram. I didn't realize she'd made some floss two videos and I don't remember if it was Helen or who had shouted her out recently, but I went to check her out and really really enjoyed Shelly's videos. She's very um, kind of soothing to listen to and interesting. So she stitches, she does quilting. Um, I hope you'll check her out. And she's in Canada um, and she has a, a brick and mortar shop and she does some online sales too, I believe. So Anyway, um, I will link her below and please go check her out and, and uh, enjoy. Um, okay, well, life, you know, I mean, same old, same old. I'm teaching online. We've only got a few weeks left. I think that's fine. <laughs> We're getting through it. I, I would not normally want to teach online, but in this case, it's, it's okay. We're getting through it, but it, uh, I'll be glad to go back to regular teaching. Um, but things are, are starting to wind down for me in terms of my my workload. Um, you now I have times where it's really busy, but it's starting to calm down so that I actually have free time and I'm, I'm appreciating having more free time. So let's talk about some whips. Okay, um, I forgot to grab the chart, but that's okay, I've shown this several times. So Vintage Birds, just made a little bit more progress on this one got the urn mostly done. There's some oblong stitches and satin stitches I need to do. And then this urn will be done. And I'm just so happy with how this is. It's beautiful. Really enjoying it. This is by Jeanette Douglas. Um, I've changed a couple of the colors. This is 40 count. This is um, a test of a new color I'm working on. So it doesn't have a name yet. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say about that, so we'll go on. I was trying to remember, I've had some different questions over the last couple of videos, and I was trying to remember if there's anything I needed to say related to that one. I think we're good. Okay, then um, my other whip that you've seen me working on lately is Where Liberty Dwells, and this one is one I do a lot of when I'm video chatting with people. So we're coming along. I've got to fill in the center of the two stars. I did I did go back and make all of these stars I talked about in my last video that I was thinking of changing them to a white because you couldn't really see them. I'm not sure that this is like significantly better, but you can see them. You know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not stressing about that. Uh, I need to put the belt on and the shoes on her. And then I need to put the words on the bottom. I don't know. It was like I was on crack when I stitched Uncle Sam. He's somehow even wider than I thought he was. And I think taller, but whatever. I mean, it looks fine. He's just got a big gap between his legs. <laughs> whatever. I, I would sweat that if it were my design. But that's why I can stitch other people's some designs sometimes and enjoy them. Because I don't have to sweat it unless I want to. But if it's mine, I gotta sweat it. So... I gotta follow my my own pattern or change my pattern. So that's that. That's coming along pretty well then. I should be done, I would think, probably this week. I've got some time and some video calls and stuff, so I think that'll that'll happen. 
Uh, oh, that was stitched on 40 count, another one of the new colors. So um, I've got kind of two new colors I'm working on. I'll release one pretty soon. The other one I'll hold back a little bit longer and continue to test. Okay, um, Halo. I've been getting some interest in Halo, my Halo quilt. And I'm sure that's just because of there's a... Um, so if, if you've been watching me for a long time, pretty much from like video number two, for a while I had Halo as my background and I would talk about it because I was working on it. Um, and then I stopped working on it. I became a designer and a fabric dyer and I hardly have time to work on it now. But anyway, there was a stitch along or a quilt along on Instagram for Halo. It started April 1st and so I've had some people asking to see it. And the, the reality is that um, I work on it on a design wall and um, the whole thing doesn't fit on the wall and now there's more stuff in the way on the wall because I, I have shipping stuff there now too. And um, anyway, I don't have a way right now or a convenient situation to take a photo of where it's at and I won't bother until I guess the last row is done. But I'm working on the last row of the main part of the quilt and so um, I worked on Halo yesterday and did one block. So I'll insert a picture of the block and I'll insert a picture of where Halo was at the last time I had a chance to take a picture of it, like above it, at a retreat a couple years ago. Um, so I, I was discussing this with Leah Noel, aviatrix stitcher on Instagram, like how do I take a photo? And I might be able to, I, might, I think I have enough room in my living room, maybe just barely to lay out all the rows and maybe stand on a chair and just kind of check things out. I really feel like I need to be higher to make sure things are placed in a balanced way, but it might work. So I'll, I'll give that a try. I'm excited that the center part is almost done, but there are 72 border blocks and I will probably make them because it really gives this cool effect with the circles and they kind of float. So um, I'm not done. I could stop and have a really nice throw, which would be okay, but I have some throws and I would like another bed quilt because I've made myself one bed quilt actually when I was about 30 and now I'm turning 40. So it'd be nice to finish, you know, another quilt now, it's about a decade. Um, anyway, uh, I have a bed quilt, but I'd like a new one. That one's very pretty, but I feel like, I don't know, it reflects a style that I had then. It's a little bit different style now. So Halo, it wasn't, you know, I've been kind of dreading getting back to it because it, it is, I mean, it's a lot of decision making. I'm deciding about every single piece of fabric in the block and there's a lot of them and it's very scrappy. And then I'm trying to not reuse ones that are around it. So, you know, making a block could take a couple of hours for me and I need to maybe be a little less fussy, but I've been so fussy all along. It's like, why, why stop now? I don't know. Um, but I recommend if you do the Halo quilt that you get the template set. You can find it online, just Google it. And that helps with the cutting a lot. I use a rotating cutting mat and I use a small sized um, Ulfa rotary cutter, like the really small, it's the blades like that big. Um, that works really well for this. Don't get, the, don't get any cheap brand, get the Ulfa. It really makes a difference, trust me. I know, cause I tried it. <laughs> Fiskers did not do the job. Um, Halo is a really cool quilt. I made mine larger, like I said, for my bed than what is actually part of the pattern. And it's in the book, if you're wondering, it's in the book Jenny from One Block by Jen Kingwell. I've had Jen Kingwell occasionally comment on my blocks and I always have a bit of a fangirl moment. Like, oh my gosh, Jen Kingwell liked my block. So anyway, I'm happy that that's progressing again. I have four more blocks to make to finish off row nine. It's gonna be an eight by nine block center and I have not really looked at the templates for the border but I think they'll go faster I, I sure hope so okay anyway that was my that was my whips segment new start I had a new start I was talking about this a little bit last time as one that was going to come up soon and I just was like you know what? I just feel like starting this I don't think I feel quite like I'm seeing a lot of people who just want to start everything I don't quite feel like starting everything but I do feel like starting stuff so, Souvenirs of the Heart, Star Spangled Spectacular by With I Needle and Thread. And I talked about this last time. I'm stitching it over one as it shows here. 
I converted to DMC and I'm using my new color and the new color does not have a name, but this is actually what the new color is going to look like. It's a little darker than you can see in this picture. That's modeling is very light on the even weaves. This is Linda 27 count. And you can see I've got a decent amount of the flag done. This is a really fun, I'm really enjoying this. This is, uh, I'm using stretcher bars for this piece. And I find that with the stretcher bars, um, I don't, you know, because I didn't give myself like huge amounts of room on the sides. It doesn't work that well for me on the Case Creations floor stand to stitch it. So I use the Case Creations lap stand and that works okay. It's not amazing, but it works okay. I have placed an order because Gary and Vanna are always talking about it. I've placed an order for a fanny frame from um, the attic. So uh, be anxious to try my first, my first hooped project I think ever. I think I started off cross stitching in hand. Did I use a hoop for the dimensions? I don't know. That's pretty much been in hand or cue snaps and then the scroll rods. Maybe I've used a hoop one time. So it'll be interesting to see what I think of using the hoop wrapped with the tool tape. Um, they're out of stock so they had to order them. I don't know when I'll get it. But when I do and I try it I'll let you know. So that's that. It was awesome. The other thing that I'm working on, because you know I'm multi craftual I made these origami stars. Now, I've done origami one other time and I wanted to make these cat bookmarks and they were really hard. And the person who made the video of them either didn't speak at all or spoke a language I don't speak. And then they showed stuff and went really fast. And there was just this part and, that I couldn't figure out. And so I successfully made a few by it kind of like accident, but I couldn't like recreate it. <laughs> so, so I've never really thought of myself as being good at origami. And in general, I'm not super attracted to paper crafts, though I always appreciate other people's paper crafts. But I came across um, a thing on Pinterest and it was a garland of stars. And I was like, that would be really pretty. And it was, I think hers were for Christmas, but I thought patriotic, it would be neat. And so I have a little bit of patriotic scrapbook paper for another project that I want to do. And I was like, well, why don't I just see, you know, I don't have very much, but why don't I just see if I can make one of these stars? So she, the woman whose blog post I had found has a video tutorial on YouTube. It's very easy to follow until you get to the part where you've folded everything and then you're going to like kind of push it together into the star shape. And she just does it fast and she doesn't speak during the video. Um, she does it fast and she's just like, sorry, I, you know, this is the tricky part and bam, it's done. So that's okay. Um, somehow I am able to do it. I still don't totally understand how I'm doing it, but I just keep kind of fooling around with it and eventually it makes the star. There's like a little, you know, you, once you get that little, um, shape on the back, then you're, then you're good. And then you do a little bit more folding and you're done. So I've made two of the large one and four of the small one. So what happened, of course, is um, she recommends like an eight inch square. So I did a couple larger ones and I was like, all right, I think I've got this enough. What happens if I do half size? So this is a four inch square because you know I like tiny. But I was thinking, how cool would this look with some like alternating different size stars? Problem, of course, is that <clears throat> I just have a few sheets of different colors that are random and it's not easy to order more online. I don't know, maybe if I went to like a scrapbook store that wasn't like a craft store, maybe I'd have better luck picking out what I want. But I found, um, I've been wanting to do something with Tim Holtz stuff. So Tim Holtz has a couple of interesting scrapbook paper pads. And so I was like, well, if I can make them, I guess I can justify buying them, right? So I ordered and, um, the estimated shipping date was like for a week away, but they're coming today. So, I mean, I ordered them Friday. <laughs> so I guess I'll be making some more stars later today. So it's fun. And I'm going to make a garland for the hutch. I need to up my spring decor game or my um, patriotic decor game and my summer decor game. Cause it's like my weakest game of all my, of all my seasonal ga games. The, the patriotic slash summer is the one that I have the least of. So I'll let you know how that goes.
But I'm linking the blog post where she starts talking about it and gives a little bit of information. And I'm linking the <clears throat> video tutorial as well for you. Okay, so yesterday, Saturday, I did what I call a crafty free-for-all. If you've been watching since like the fall, the late fall, I was talking about it then too. <clears throat> um, sometimes it's hard for me to just take time for myself or to do so without feeling guilty because um, I could always be doing more <laughs> and more dyeing, more designing, more whatever. Um, and so I started this thing in the fall a couple of times on Saturdays where like I would have a crafty free for all and it was like I could work on whatever I wanted to work on, any hobby, any craft, and I wasn't allowed to feel guilty about it and I, and I wasn't allowed to do work. I mean, if I wanted to like do some model stitching for fun because that sounded fun, then that was fine. Or if I wanted to do some designing that day because it sounded really fun, then that was fine too. But, but I needed to do fun things. Nothing, no shoulds, no shoulds, shoulds are banned. And, um, so I finally to the point where I can have another crafty free for all. And I did on Saturday and it was awesome. It was everything I hoped it would be and more. <laughs> it's been a while. So I have been in the mood. I've been talking about doing more quilting. I wasn't quite ready to deal with Halo at that moment, but I was thinking about making pin cushions. And so I've been like looking at these different pin cushions and I was like, I, I think I need to make some. And I had a kit that I bought a while ago and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe this is a good project for me. And it was, it turned out great. So I cannot wait to show you this. Okay. So, uh, this is from never not knitting. Oh my God. Can you even stand it? I'm dying looking at it. <laughs> ah, this is from never not knitting and sometimes sewing. It's, um, knitting designer, Alana Dacos. I think that's how you say her name. And so on her site, you know, she's got knitting patterns and then she's got a few sewing patterns and then she's got some kits. So this is a pattern and it's a kit. Now she's out of stock of the kits cause I just bought a couple more and I bought the last two. So I'm sorry, but you can like email her and be like, Hey, when are these coming back into stock? So that she knows she needs to get you some. They're like $15 each for this awesomeness. So what comes in your kit, it's very nicely packaged. This is called, um, I don't know, Little Hedgehog Pincushion or something. Anyway, it's very nicely packaged in like a, a little box and it's got the baker's twine on the outside and then it's got like um, tissue paper on the inside and everything's packaged perfectly. The whole thing comes like, there's a piece of felt, there's this piece, this is woven woven fabric like it feels like it's wool to me or maybe a wool blend I think it's wool though so woven fabric comes there's like a piece of that and it comes with the DMC thread it comes with sewing thread I mean you do this by hand and then there's wooden disc that you're going to put on the bottom inside of it everything that you need including the pins and the instructions come in the kit if you buy the kit so um I bought this one for me and then I wanted to give one to a friend who's a weaver because I thought she'd really appreciate this. So let me tell you about this. This probably took me about, um, I would guess three and a half hours to do. And I think the next one would be much faster because I just had to figure some things out. So I did a couple of things differently. I thought you might be interested to hear what I did. The eyes. Now she has you embroider the eyes, but I had made a, a felt ornament couple years ago using these brads because that was what was recommended in the pattern and it's genius you know I mean my my um, satin stitching is okay on felt but it's not great so why not just speed it up so these little brads um they're by Daris if I can find the information I think I bought mine on Etsy but if I can find the information for you on these brads I'll um I'll put it in the description I just don't know if I remember off the top of my head what they, I could probably find out for you. Anyway, so to save time and to have it look good, I did the brads for the eyes instead of embroidering them. Um, the other thing that I did is since I have a sewing machine, I, I mean, she has you like hand stitch this seam 
and mine just didn't look that good. And I was like, I got a sewing machine. Like, let's just do this. So I did. And then, um, she gives you the stuffing. So I stuffed what I did with the woven piece. You're supposed to do like a gathering, like a running stitch around it to gather this part. And I thought maybe I could do that on the sewing machine because I've done it before. You know, you just do like a basting stitch and then pull. That worked okay, but it actually didn't work as well as just actually doing it by hand. But the sewing machine stitch, I think, did help have some, like, give a little bit more strength to this area here when I had to pull it really tight. And then you're basically, like, you put the little wooden disc in and then you're basically, like, lacing across this, you know, lacing it close as much as you can around the disc. And I ended up using quilting thread, like for quilting, hand quilting thread, because it's really strong. So any really, I mean, she includes a sewing thread and it's probably, I mean, maybe it's a polyester then it won't break. I don't know. I didn't use it, but um, you want something that's not going to break when you're lacing this because yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want something that doesn't break. Um, then, you know, you're just probably the hardest part was just stitching the face on because it just takes a while. So I took like um, straight pins and kind of pinned his head where I wanted it and then just took little stitches. She has you again use sewing thread to whip stitch, but I liked the look of gray embroidery floss because that's what I use when I do felt ornaments. So I just used like one strand of DMC that matched this and went around and sewed his face onto the pin cushion. So that was one of the more time consuming and a little bit tricky parts of it, but it wasn't like that hard. And then the last step is to sew a piece to the bottom again with a whip stitch to close it up. And I just cannot tell you how delighted I am with this thing. It makes me so stinking happy. So I had to share it with you. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll link the kit so that you can find it, even though it is out of stock at the moment. And I'll link the pattern so that in the pattern, it says that there are, um, resources for where to get the materials. Since I bought the kit version, I don't, I don't know what they are because it's not in that pattern. So the crafty free for all, that's what I did during the crafty free for all. I made a hedgehog and I made a halo block and I stitched and kind of hung out and it was a great day. It was like a spa day almost in a way, you know? Well, I mean, I don't really do that. So that's my version of this. crafting on whatever I want is my version of a spa day. So if you ever want to join me, um, you know, I, I don't know if I can, I can't always do it and it may not always be Saturdays, but what I'm going to do is start using the hashtag crafty free for all. And it's just, it's just guilt-free crafting on whatever you want. So if you want to commit a certain amount of time for yourself to do whatever you want and it to be guilt free, I encourage you to do so. And if you want to like hashtag it on Instagram, then I'll, I'll look for it and I will cheer you on. Okay. So what else have I been up to? Um, just briefly, I'm still thinking about my birthday start and I'm still kidding up things for mania. I got an interesting comment from Susie Reno from Sue. Um, on my last video just just this morning or last night and she was saying that maybe instead of stitching all of Mercedes I should pick out some motifs and do some smalls so I was contemplating that I feel like that would work with most samplers the thing that I'm thinking is that some of these motifs are huge and that something I think that in a way what charms me about this is the jumble of them together but it's it's a good idea. So I'm 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 mulling. I feel like I'm gonna just what I think is gonna happen is that I'm just gonna commit to this. I don't know if I want it to be my birthday start though, because I feel like that's some pressure. Maybe I should just start it. Anyway, I'm thinking that I just start it and I see how it goes. And if I decide at some point that like I'm really not enjoying it, I can just stop and pass it along to someone else to finish up. Like, that's okay. It's okay to learn. Like, I'm I'm open to learning that about myself. I, it's a theory I have that I might have trouble. If it is too much trouble, that's okay. I will, I will be okay with that. 
you know, it's okay to, to find that out. So the other thing that could be a birthday start then, because I've been thinking about this, is Agnes Platt's strawberry sampler. So very pretty. So it's a candidate. It turns out I'm not working on my birthday. So I need to figure this out because I want to be rushing down the stairs at 4 a.m., grabbing a cup of coffee and being excited to start something. But I'll probably put one stitch in the night before so it's not that hard. I can just actually start stitching. So contemplation. You can feel free to comment and let me know if you, if you have any feelings about this. Alrighty, um, fabric. So I've been talking about oh, oh, for, for forever, it seems like, these new colors. So one of the new colors is ready, but I'm not done dying like for an update. So this needs a name. That's pretty accurate. I love this color. It is so, so pretty. So this is a 36 count linen to give you a sense for what it looks like. So this is close to what I stitched this on and the little rabbit, the etching, the spring hair etching that I showed last time. That's this, okay? So that's what it looks like on linen. It's very light on Lugana, as usual. I was showing you with my Star Spangled Spectacular. So they're very, this is Linda, this is Lugana. They're pretty much the same in terms of the coloration. Very pale. Um, it's a little bit, the modeling is a bit more noticeable in person, but it's very light. Uh, I'll talk about Linda in a second. And then Ada. This is 14 count Ada. So it's pretty close. It's maybe just a tiny, tiny bit lighter than the linen. I need like a third hand. There you go. So that's what they look like. And I would like you to help me name them. I don't know if you remember back in the fall, I had a naming contest. I like to do that again because I think they're fun and you guys have really good ideas for names. So you can comment, tell me what I should call this fabric color. It should be a one or one, one to two word name because I have to write it out by hand on a card a million times over. And so I prefer it to not be super long. Um, one to two word name for it. It can't be a color name I already have. So, you know, not macchiato or soft porcelain. Those are the only colors that are kind of similar to this that I have. Um, and what I will do is I will choose my favorite name suggestion from the from your comments. And that person will win a fat quarter of fabric, either in linen, Lugana, or Ada, and they can tell me which count among the counts that I offer um, they would like. So um, again, I'm going to ask that it be only entries for the United States for now, just because of shipping and avoiding the post office. So the thing about um, PayPal is yes, I can just use PayPal to ship, but I can't ship internationally in PayPal without at least an invoice. I don't even know if I can with an invoice, but I can't without an invoice. It's a long story, but, and in Etsy I can, but you have, you'd have already ordered something. So anyway, <laughs> um, please be 18 or older and please be uh, living in the United States somewhere that I can ship to you and comment with your, uh, your name suggestion for this. And then, like I said, I'll pick the one that I like the best. If more than one person comments with the same name suggestion, I'll just go through and see who commented it first. Like if it's the one, you know, the winning name, I'll just make sure that whoever commented that name first is the one that wins it. Um, and the giveaway or the naming contest slash giveaway will be um, ending on April 18th. 
Okay, so 8, 18th is the last day to comment to let me know what you think. And I am excited to read your suggestions because you guys have really good ideas. Um, okay, so thanks for listening to my interview with Gary on Fiber Talk. Um, really appreciate it. I read your comments there and some of you sent me some comments. It was very nice. So thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed doing that interview with him. I really appreciated your comments and I really appreciate your comments on my last video. Um, I'm behind on even just, I'm, re I'm reading them, but I haven't had time to go in and, and like all of them. So I'll try to get back to doing that. Um, don't forget, I don't know if, when this video will actually upload, but if it uploads in time, don't forget that Fiber Talk is having a stitching marathon today from noon until 6 p.m. for Easter. So check that out. I know Gary wanted to get to a thousand and when I popped in around noon, they already were at a thousand. So congratulations. Uh, okay. From the archives, I think I might have shown this before, I can't remember. This is a bag that I made a few years ago, or maybe maybe more than a few years ago now, I can't, can't really remember, and I'm sorry I did not iron it. This is the Go Anywhere bag, and this is by um, Noodlehead Anagram. And this is a really good kind of not complicated bag if you're a newer bag sewer. It has three pockets here. It's like a divided pocket on this side. Then on this side, there's a snap pocket. There's a little bit of piping here, which I think is very pretty. I, I've i made my own piping, but in this case, I just used a store-bought piping. And then straps are kind of cool. You make your own straps. Um, there's a, I don't know if they call it a hidden snap or it's a covered snap anyway, you can see magnet. I really like that closure. And then on the inside of the bag, this is awkward. I think it was awkward the last time I tried to show the inside of uh, Sue's bag. There's a couple pockets. So it's just like a really nice, simple bag that would function for a lot of different things. You know, like I put water in the pocket before like a water bottle and, and it's really, really a nice one, good for coding projects or books around or whatever, whatever you'd want to carry in it. So I'd recommend this to you if you're looking for like a fun bag that isn't super complicated to make. Um, this is again called the Go Anywhere bag. And I've made several of Anagram's patterns now. Um, I've done the poolside tote, the uh, super tote, which I think I showed somewhat recently and the divided basket and they're all they're all really great patterns. The one of hers that I'd like to do next is um the wool and wax tote and she did it with wool fabric and then the bottom the base is wax canvas and I've been just like looking at people making bags out of wax canvas and it looks you know amazing. So I need to venture into the waxed canvas territory soon. I'm in a like so I'm in a kind of quilting mood. A sewing mood. The pin cushions are just sort of a gateway drug into being back at my sewing machine, I think. And um, so I'm still thinking about maybe starting a new quilt, but the thought of getting Halo done is really appealing. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm just, I'm trying to put plans out there, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I hope it's not annoying for you, but I'm not making myself stick to them because this is supposed to be fun. Darn it. <laughs> And my whole, there's plenty of other parts of my life that are pretty planned out and that I have to stick to the, the plan. So this is my, this is my area to, to just kind of do whatever. Lastly, um, I'm adding fabric into the shop sporadically. So just different colors here and there. So you can check it out. And I've been adding them on pretty much a weekly basis, just a little bit of fabric. And um, I'm getting ready for the update for the new color. It'll be, I think probably two to three more weeks before I'm ready to do that. But so anyway, I'm not sending out an email for just the small, the small little updates. So you can just kind of look for those or, or get like Etsy notifications, but I will send out um, my email newsletter when the new color is ready. So if you'd like to be notified when I have a shop update, that's like a larger update, such as with a new color, you can set up for my newsletter. I always link it below in the description box, or you can just go to luminousfiberarts.com right on the homepage there. 
the newsletter sign up is right there. So it's very easy. I think that's all I've got for today. So uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope that you're well. Hopefully uh, you're having a great day and you're getting a lot of stitching in. And if you're not getting a lot of stitching in, hopefully you're doing other things that are taking care of you, which is the most important thing. It doesn't matter if you aren't in the mood to stitch right now. Just, just do what feels, feels good to you. So I will be back in another week and I will see you soon. Take care.